everybody and welcome back to Red Devils TV. Now in today's video I might be a bit of a controversial one but I honestly think United are going to make top four and here's my reason why. So as we all know Manchester United are currently four wins and two losses in the Premier League. Now last four games have been four wins straight, two goals conceded and it's really good at the moment. So yeah, United are currently, well technically we're currently five uh, five games, five wins and two goals conceded, which is crazy considering we conceded six in the first two games of the season. Now, obviously we know we took the loss to Real Sociedad in between that, but that was a completely different team. That wasn't the first team, so obviously I'm not including that. But with this team, I honestly think United will get top four. And like I said, this is my reason why. I just think the way Ten Hag sets up, I think the way that the players have adapted to his style. And even though this isn't Ten Hag's true style and how he exactly wants to play, it's working out for us at the moment. And as he's saying, at every press conference, it doesn't matter the oppo opponent, it matters game by game. And that's all he thinks about. He doesn't think about the derbies he doesn't think about the big games that are coming up he thinks and takes every game by every game and that's what you want to, your manager to say and right now the way he's talking to the press the way that he's exciting the fans he couldn't be doing anything more pretty much is what i'm trying to say so for me as a manchester united fan it's like i said it's giving me excitement it's giving me hope and the fact that our manager is also winning manager of the month for the Premier League is a massive statement, considering it's his only second month in charge. And it's just crazy, like I said. So obviously, I know we've had our two games cancelled or postponed, should I say, of the Leeds and Crystal Palace game. But let's be honest, we know we were going to win them anyway. So they're just points waiting to be added to our total. And... Yeah, it's it it gives me a lot of confidence, to be honest. So, like I said, I'm just going to go in a quick deep dive into Ten Hag's current system. And, yeah, let's just get right into it. So, obviously, we all know that Ten this isn't Ten Hag ball. This isn't the way Ten Hag played at Ajax. Ten Hag, the way he played at Ajax, is like 70% possession of the ball, high line. Um, like I said, high possession football and just constant attack after attack after attack like minimum like 10 shots on target uh, each game it's like and uh, yeah he just wants to score goals and <coughs> the way he sets up he plays from the back so he's already got that lined up he's already got the back set up obviously he likes to have a foot a keeper that's good with his feet but I think right now with the defence that United have got, De Gea doesn't have to be too good with his feet. All he needs to do is worry about the shots that get through the defence. And that's what De Gea is really good at, it being a shot stopper. Obviously, I know he's had um, some issues this season, pre-season and against Brentford, when he's gone to save a ball and it's fell through his hands or something. But right now, that as it isn't happening with De Gea, he got unlucky. With the Salah goal uh, against Liverpool, it, he made a good save, and then he just Mo Salah. He, while he was on the floor, he just Mo Salah just uh, had an easy heading to score the goal. So it's not like the Hay is making mistakes anymore. So obviously, that a time will tell if the Hay will step up his game or not. But I personally think that when it comes to David De Gea, he's playing very well at the moment. And United don't need to think about where he's going to go. Is he going to sign a new contract? Who's the new keeper? Shall we drop him for Dubravka? All that stuff. We don't need to be thinking about that right now. De Gea is our number one. I personally back De Gea. I think he's very good. I think considering he was one of the reasons United got as far as they did last season, we should be doubting him, okay? He was... <coughs> One of our player of the years, it, well, it, him and Ronaldo were our player of the years. And it's just, um, United fans just need to back De Gea, is what I'm trying to say. Obviously, that's just my opinion, I'm not telling you to back anyone. But I just think that United fans should back De Gea because after all he's done for the club, after how he's improved, after Brentford, after because conceding four from a goalkeeper... Must knock your confidence, but what did he do? He 
went into the next game confident and kept a clean sheet. What more can you say? So when, when you think about that, it just gives you confidence, like I said. So, yeah, let's get into the way the midfield play. So, when it comes to... <coughs> Excuse me. So, when it comes to De Gea... Uh, no, not De Gea, what am I talking about? I said move on to the midfield. Actually, no, I'm talking about the back four quickly. So, De Lot, Varane, Martinez, Malasia. What more can I say? They're just immense at the moment. They're absolutely incredible. No doubt that they will be voted in the Premier League player of the the Premier League team of the season the way they're going. It would not surprise me in the slightest. So many people doubted Martinez, he's proved him wrong. So many people doubted De Lot and said, why is he choosing Wan Bissaka over De Lot? He's proved you wrong. Malasia, like Martinez, new player to the league, you wouldn't think it. And obviously Varane. Didn't play too well last season, but he's found a good partner in Martinez. And you can tell that he is a true leader and the true captain of this team, I personally think. I know Bruno's currently the captain and Maguire is the club captain. But for me, Varane is the true captain to Manchester United. The way he organises the back four, the relationships he's building with the back four and midfield. He's doing very, very well. And I think this is Varane back at his best like he was at Real Madrid. So... The midfield, um, Scott McTominay is playing that holding midfielder very well at the moment. I always thought that McTominay was more of a number eight, where box to box type of midfielder. But obviously, Ten Hag has um, adapted him and um, developed him into being a more number six. Now, currently on form, Scott McTominay is doing great, but I honestly think he can't keep Casemiro out of the squad for too long. Because Casemiro is one of the best holding midfielders in the world. And we bought him for a high price in 60 million. So I like what Tenag's doing, to be honest. He's showing he's, he's rewarding players that deserve to play and players that are playing well. So, like I said, I just think that it only ta oh, uh, there'll only be a matter of time when Casemiro is Manchester United's main number six. But the way that Ericsson plays. He's kind of like a deep number 10, not like a number 8 where he's going box to box to box to box. He's not He's not like that. <coughs> he's a player that's like a deep um, playmaker, should I say. So, obviously, he will feed the ball to the, wing, to the forwards and um, Bruno. Um, and, yeah, I just think he's doing the role really well. I think Bruno as well has took the responsibility of being the new captain very well. He's not cracking under pressure. He obviously still has to improve, uh, but I think Bruno is getting his form back. And, obviously, last season, when he got his new contract, so many people were doubting him and saying that the way he was playing was just bad, etc. So, I think De Bruyne... Uh, not De Bruyne, uh, Bruno... Um, I've still got a long way to go, but I think that he's improving game by game, and that's what you want to see from Manchester United players. Uh, wingers, they kind of... You will, it, Ten Hag likes to use um, Rashford and Anthony on the wing, but he plays Rashford through the middle at the moment, and then he brings him out to the wide, obviously, when he brings a centre-forward on, like Ronaldo or Martial in the future, when they play that number nine role. I think Rashford suits the, num the left wing a lot better, because... The way he can um, run from wide and then go and make more of them central runs. I think that's what Rashford does best. And <coughs> when it comes to one-on-ones, the likes of Anthony and Rashford, when they go on the counter-attack, because that's how United are playing at the moment. Obviously, you know how Ten Hag wants to play. wants to play with the high, uh, high possession, 70% football. High line and lots of shots. But right now, United are playing a bit more of a deeper line and just being very careful and cautious. But when we do go on the counter-attack, Rashford and Anthony will be crucial to this um, system that Ten Hag currently building and during this rebuild. Does Rashford deserve a new contract? I'm not gonna say I'm gonna make a new I'm gonna make a video tomorrow on that talking about players uh, who deserve who uh whose contracts are nearly up and do they deserve new contracts or not. Um so yeah, 
pretty much that's just a deep dive into how Ten Hag's currently playing. I think the next six weeks are crucial to Manchester United's season because we've got 13 games in the next six weeks. Then it's the World Cup. And I think that if United can go into the World Cup break um, quite um, exciting and quite um, motivated, then I think that United fans will start to believe me in thinking we're going to make top four because before the season started, no one put United in their top four unless you were a delusional United fan because no one could have seen it this coming. No, no matter what you say, no matter you say, oh yeah, I did, I did, I, I predicted it, like I backed Ten Hag all the way. I backed Ten Hag before he started his first games, but you can't, you couldn't admit the way that City had won the league, the way that Liverpool had challenged City for the league, the way that Arsenal and Spurs and Chelsea were playing, because no one expected Tuchel to get sacked. United were at the bottom of the top six, that was guaranteed. People's main top sixes were like City or Liverpool to win the league and then the other team to to come second and then Chelsea, Spurs or Arsenal. They they were the favourites for third and fourth and then United were around sixth place. I put United sixth, I think, or fifth in my Premier League predictions and obviously we're going to have a look back at that obviously at the end of the season and see how wrong I got it. But um, right now... I think that United are confident for the for the top four place. I did predict at the start of the season as well that United would not finish top four, but would win Europa League. The way we're going at the moment, I wouldn't be surprised if we do both. We get top four and we win the Europa League. And honestly, that would be an amazing achievement for Ten Hag's first um, finger, first season as a man as Manchester United manager. I honestly think just making top four as a whole is a great achievement for Ten Hag. But if he could get a hands on a trophy, uh, it would just be incredible. Now, it might not be the Europa League. It might be the Carabao Cup. It might be the FA Cup. We don't know. But right now, I personally just see Ten Hag raising that Europa League and United are guaranteed to be in, champion, in the Champions League. And yeah, I just can't wait. So I honestly think United fans should have more confidence and as Ten Hag says, we'll go back we go game by game and whatever happens in the previous game, players who played well will be rewarded, players who um don't play well will be told. So it's good to see that Ten Hag actually has control of the dressing room. He isn't getting backstabbed like certain managers have been in previously. You can tell that the team are behind Ten Hag and you can tell that certain players are working extra hard to get back into the team, like your Luke Shaws, your Scott McTominay's who's made it back to the first team, your Diego Dalots. Like these players, you can tell, are trying to push because they know that if they keep playing well, they will get rewarded. Now, obviously, I have a theory about wan Bissaka as well, that wan Bissaka was obviously a ve it has obviously been very poor recently but like the likes of um Ferran who looks like a complete different he looks like a complete different center back with this Martinez and Malasia and the Lotling club maybe you could give Juan Bissaka a chance because I'm, I'm saying for like an easy game or like a, a game that's non threatening so maybe like uh, when we play Aston Villa um, in the League Cup or FA Cup, whichever. I think it's the League Cup, isn't it? Yeah, it's the League Cup when we play Aston Villa. So maybe you could do that just for some rotation. Because like I said, this next six weeks is going to be very, very important to Manchester United's season. But yeah, I think United will make top four. I think we'll go deep into a trophy, possibly even win one. I personally think Europa League. Let me know your thoughts on how United will finish in the league. Obviously, I know it's very early, but yeah, just let me know on this on your thoughts on this today's video. So yeah, please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.